Ecclesiastes chapter 6, Ecclesiastes in chapter number 6, or not 6, number 4. I have chapter 6 on my mind from this morning, Ecclesiastes 4. You probably wonder, well, where did chapter 4 and 5 go to? Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Once you find your place, I invite you to stand as we honor God with the reading of his word. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 1. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter. And on the side of the oppressors, there was power, but they had no comforter. Wherefore I praise the dead, which were already dead, more than the living, which are yet alive. Yea, better is he than both they which hath not yet been, who hath not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Again, I considered all travail and, and every right work, that for this is a man in, uh, envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. The full fold of his hands together and, he, and eateth his own flesh. Better is an handful of with quietness than both the, the hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. Then I returned and saw vanity under the sun. There is one alone and there is not an, a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother, yet is there no end of all his labor, neither is his eye satisfied with riches. Neither saith he, For whom do I labor, and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity, yea, it is a sore travail. Let's pray. Father, as we are to the teaching and preaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach. Thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, as we discuss these scriptures this evening, Lord, I ask that you would help us tonight, that we have done our due diligence to help us to, uh, to be focused and to be engaged in the message. Lord, I ask that you would bless the message tonight, or that you would meet with us. Father, I ask that you would have your will and your way in the service tonight. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. Comfort and friendship. Comfort and friendship. Everyone needs a friend. Right? At least one. There are some that have multiple friends. Multiple friendships. But in saying that, we all need one friend that we can just go to and lay everything out, right? We all need that one friend. And Solomon is talking about that here in chapter 4. And uh, he uses different scenarios in this chapter about friendship and having a friend or someone that, that you can go to. Or, and uh, the first thing we're going to see in verses 1 through, th one through 3 is uh, about being oppressed. Uh, listen, there's always going to be oppressors. And I, and I even have in my notes, as advanced as we get in our own society and in the world, there's always going to be oppressors. Because he says in verse number 1 that there are those that oppress, and then there you have the poor. And the, he says that the poor that are being oppressed, they don't have a comforter. There's no, they, he's talking about uh, those that can comfort them in this oppression. He goes, the oppressors, they have power, but even though they have power, they don't have comforter. And so he goes, therefore, because uh, you're going to get hurt in your life, if you're alive, you're going to be hurt. So Solomon's saying, he goes, wherefore, I praise the dead. 
Listen, if you're if you're alive, you're going to be hurt. We've all been hurt, haven't we, by someone? And if we're honest with ourselves, we remember the day, the time, everything in that conversation, don't we? Sometimes, because a lot of times we hold on to that, and we have this shame on. If I, if you hurt me, shame on you. But if you hurt me again, shame on me, right? We use that. You fool me once, fool, you know, shame on you. you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And we hold on to that. And Solomon here, he, he's like, it's better to be dead than alive because of being hurt. Wherefore I praise the dead which are already dead more than the living which are yet alive. Yea, better is he than both they which hath not yet been, who hath not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. He goes, I, I praise the, the dead more than the living because they, they're not going to have to put up with the evil and the oppression and things that are coming. He goes, I, he goes even those who have not yet come, they're going to feel it. They're going to see it. And the dead, they don't have to worry about injustice or oppression anymore. That's what Solomon is saying. And he, he's looking on the outside in and uh, of, of these folks, it's like he's walking around in every one of these scenarios, he's just looking. And even in a courtroom, if you look at a courtroom, there's always uh, both, both sides, and, and those that are being oppressed or the ones that's being sued or the ones that's uh, uh, whatever you want to put out there, he goes, they have no one. That he's looking in this courtroom. He goes, the poor there, they have no comforter, but yet the oppressor that has the power, they, they, they don't have any comforter. And he's saying there needs to be, both the sides need friendship. And, and, and in our eyes, we're like, well, if they're being oppressors, I, they don't need anybody. They're, they're, they're causing enough damage. But we all need friends, and we all need someone that can comfort us, whether we're being the one oppressed or the one or we're the ones doing the oppression and 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 then he and then he's looking he, he, it's like he strolls down a little further and he's wondering why there's competition amongst the people look at verse number 4 yea better is he than both they which hath not yet been or or for again i considered all travail and in and every right work, for this is for this a man is envied of his neighbor. This is also vanity and vexation. The fool foldeth his hands together and eateth uh, his own flesh. Better is he or better is a handful with quietness than both of his hands, both the hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. Uh, and so, talking about competition in verse number four. It seems, it seems like he's saying everybody is in competition with each other and they're trying to keep up with the, uh, the, uh, the Joneses. That was, a, that was a thing back in the 90s, wasn't it? Keeping up with the Joneses. So, so you, we used to say when people were uh, getting the, something new or upgrading their house or whatever it was, there's always competition in keeping up with the Joneses. And Solomon sees seems to think that the reason folks are always working is to impress someone, whether it's his neighbor or his co-worker. He's kind of looking at the job site here uh, and looking at what's going on in these people. You have this sect of people who are always working uh, for uh, whether to impress their neighbor or to impress someone else. And if and those of us, we may have that same thought. Well, man, I hope somebody sees my new... What is because we want we want to we want someone to feel impressed of what we bought or what we've done. I mean, come on, men. Our wives could be out there paving the driveway, as Jeff Foxworthy says. We're, we're, we're audacious enough. We'll go out there and tell her why she's paving the driveway. We loaded the dishwasher. <laughs> that's how we are, men. That's how we are. We listen. We do things to impress people. Men, we do things to impress our wife. I don't know how many times I tell my wife, hey, come look at this, what I've done. You know, I mean, come on. When we're dating, we send all the flowers till we get married. Shh. 
<laughs> we do things to impress. And Solomon is saying, you, you, you have uh, the, these people are working to, to, uh, for envy because of their neighbor. They're wanting their neighbor to be impressed. Competition. Keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak. And, he, and look at what he says in the next verse. Verse five to, uh, in verse 5, the fool folded his hands together and he is his own flesh. He goes, you have some that work so hard day and night just so that they can buy new things, have a bigger house, have the greatest and latest and greatest, and you have the totally opposite, those who just quit working. What was it, the 50s when the flower child syndrome came? Some of you that are older, remember those days? I wasn't even uh, thought of. My parents were barely alive then. And what was the thing? Just to stop working and go sit in the grass, grow long hair, and sing Kumbaya? He goes, you have the fool that just totally quits working altogether and does this. He says, he eats his own flesh. Because he has nothing to eat. So you've got one extreme of working all the time to impress somebody. Then you have the fool who doesn't care, doesn't even want to work. He goes, these people don't even care about keeping up with the Joneses. They don't even want to work. And you have these that work themselves to death. And, and what he's, in Solomon, what he's saying... And is this, better is a handful with quietness than both the hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. He goes, he goes out of the two, he goes, it's better just to go instead of working eight hour, 80 hours a week with travail and envy, work 40 hours a week, go, home, go to the store, buy some Bluebell, and eat it. How many cartons y'all got in the freezer today? Seven. <laughs> no, the, the thing that's what he's saying. It's better <coughs> to have one hand with working with one hand with quietness. Better just to work and enjoy life than to go out there with two hands and work and travail worry about this and worry about that and and so solomon that's what he's saying he goes enjoy you know go work and enjoy life we should not work solely for accolades or to keep up with the joneses but to enjoy life with what god gives us Number three, don't be a Scrooge. Don't be a Scrooge. Look at verse number seven and eight. Then I returned and saw vanity under the sun. He goes, in another scenario, there is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he hath neither child nor brother, yet is there not no end of all his labor? Neither is his eye satisfied with riches, Neither saith he, for whom do I labor and bereave my soul of good? This is also vanity. It is a sore travail. Don't be Scrooge. Don't, when we think about it, Scrooge, who do we think about? Ebenezer Scrooge, don't we? I know that there was a movie about Scrooge. But when I think of Scrooge, I think of Walt Disney and the Ducks. Right? That, that, that's my image of Ebenezer Scrooge. Always in a bad mood. Always, all he wants to do is work and count his money. Right? That, that's the Scrooge that we, in the Christmas season, that we, we talk about. And don't, don't be a Scrooge. Don't be what Solomon here is talking about. There are those that are alone to work and not satisfied. You, everyone, we all have those. We all have certain employees that they're, 
And they're all about the money. We have these, I have these vendors at work. They all, whether it's a bread vendor or whatever, vendors, they, you know, they buy their routes. And they're always talking. And what they're, they always talk about the same thing. I'm about that hustle. I'm about to hustle. I got to. I got to make that bread. You know, they don't hardly ever get vacations because they don't want to give their route over for uh, uh, for a few days to some. They don't want to hire somebody to give the route out for a few days. Yeah, I asked one guy. I'm like, you're always here. Do you ever take a day off? He goes, no, because they these people want money. Well, there's more to life than money. And Solomon here is saying, there's this person. He goes, there's these that are alone. They don't have a friend. They don't even have a brother or a sibling to share their life with. And we call these folks Scrooges. It's all about the bottom dollar with them. It's all about the bottom line. And so he has no friend, no brother to enjoy life. And he's only live, and he only lives for money. And it says, "Yet his eye is not satisfied." He's become a Scrooge because he has no one to enjoy life. And folks, this uh, uh, Solomon, he's looking in uh, to this to this guy, this work life, or. or all this guy is wanting is this and that, and he's never satisfied. He's always wanting more and more and more money. And I, I understand that we have to have money to live, right? We got to have mo- we have to have money to live. We have to work if we're going to get money, because not all of us are born with a golden spoon, right? But does our, does our life have to solely consist of work? As I, as I told y'all, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, if you were to ask a child what they want, most of them would want mom and dad home. Not go to daycare. Not have so-and-so watch me, watch them. But rather have mom and dad home, not go in th- this place or that place, but... Having mom and dad's attention at home. And this and Solomon is saying this is this type of person, just like the others, it's vanity, it's vexation of spirit. So we need listen, we need to be friendly. Be friendly. Look at verse number nine. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. It is better to go through life with a friend than alone. God never intended us to live this, this Christian life, this discipleship life with our Savior alone. If he did, we would never, he would never have created the church. We're not meant to go through this life alone, but listen, we need to be friendly. Friends can help lift you up. Look what he says. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. We need friends to help lift us up, don't we? Now, now we as friends, we give each other a hard time, but listen, if we know that our friend is going through a hard time, what do we as a friend want to do? Pick them up to help them the best we can. And so we need to be friendly because two is better than one. But woe to him that is alone. When he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Don't be like what uh, alone, like verse 8 is talking about. Scrooge don't have any friends, does he? Because all he cares about is money. But if you've got a friend, you you got somebody that will help you and, when, and pick you up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Listen, if you're alone, you don't have any help. Friendships are essential for life. We've all seen those shirts that pe- that people created during COVID. I am essential. 
right? Because that was the big. Only essential workers are going to be allowed to work. Well, I am essential. Friendships are essential for life. Though we, uh, we may not have the same friends or close friends growing up as we do as we get later in life. I've had many sets of friends. But even though I may not be at home and have the, my friends that I had in high school or that I grew up with in grade school, I have other friends. Why? Because I need a friend to pick me up when I'm what we call in a bad way. When I'm in trouble, I need a friend to pick me up. And so be friendly because one day you're going to need help. If one struggles, he has someone who can help. Who can help? Life is cold and it's hard a lot of times. And we need. You're going to need want someone to warm you up, and a friend can help warm you. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. This is why we need friendships when someone's going through a hard time. When Satan is doing his work on one of our friends, we need a friend to help us, to help, don't we? That person needs a friend. Not only does he need a friend, he could use a couple of friends because a threefold cord is not easily broken. When you've got a couple of friends, when you, see, when you have a friend that's going down making a bad decision or Satan is attacking, a couple of friends that can come to his help, he's going to have a better chance. When I say chance, he's going to have a better chance at coming through this than if he were alone. Folks, when, when, when we get into sin, a lot of times we push people out because all we want is what's in front of us, whatever t- the temporary pleasure it is. Don't let them people don't let those folks push you out. Stay in contact because you might be the one that helps them bring them out of whatever when I say funk they're in. Be friendly. Don't stop being friendly. We need friends. Friendship is essential in life. Because friends can comfort. Number five, don't be so high that you can't be admonished. Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Think about King David. What was he in the kingdom when he was, when he was a kid? Shepherd, right? Do you know who on the, who's on the, on the bottom part of the totem pole in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Israel? Shepherds. He was a poor child. But he was right. He was, even though he was born a poor child, he became king. And so Solomon here is kind of bringing his dad's, what happened to his dad, to life. And he's saying it is better for a kid, a child to be poor and wise than to rise up to be a king that thinks he's too good for any kind of help. There are those that don't think that they need any kind of help. They've got all the answers. If you were to ask them a question, they don't even have to be called on. They just spit it out. Right? And so here, he, he don't be so high-minded or high that you yourself cannot be admonished. David was born poor in Israel but became king. Solomon knows no matter how high you get, you still still need to be admonished. For out of prison he cometh to reign, whereas also he, he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. I considered all the living which walk under the sun with the second child that shall stand up in his stead, 
There is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Even though Solomon is now king, he seems to feel like that he's forgotten. That's what, he's, that's what he says in verse 16. He, he, he's king, and, but yet he feels like he's been forgotten. Friendships help the, for those who feel like they've for, been forgotten. We have all have times in our life where we feel like we've forgotten. We're, we've been forgotten. We might be going through a hard time and we may be expecting a phone call or a visit and, not, and that, that phone call doesn't come. A visit doesn't come. Well, I guess they forgot about me. That's the way Solomon is feeling. And that's why we need to be friendly and not forget about our friends. And I know it's hard. We get caught up in our own life and our own things that we're doing, our own family. And sometimes we forget about our friends. Comfort and friendship. We all need comfort at, at times, and we all need friendship. So, as he says in verse number 8, it's kind of the, the key verse in this chapter. There is one that is alone, and there is not a second. Do you have friends today that you can turn to? Well, let me ask you. You might say, well, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Are you someone that your friend can turn to? We all have friends that we can turn to. Is there someone that can turn to you? When they are needing comfort. When they are needing friendship. Folks, don't be an outcast. Someone that people can't turn to. Someone that thinks that you have all the answers and you don't need anybody and they don't need you. No, because one day it's going to be cold out there. And you're going to need to get warm. I'm using that as a metaphor, okay? Be friendly so you can give comfort and you can re receive comfort from a friend. If you don't have anyone that you can turn to, or that you don't think you have someone that you could turn to or open up to. Maybe it's because you yourself have not shown yourself to be friendly. We all need friends to comfort us when we're in life. So be a friend. Don't be the Scrooge in verse number 8 and be alone and by yourself. And all you care about is yourself and your material gain. Be a friend. Father, as we...